guys, welcome back. Mermaid Nina here. Well, it's time for another update video. I know it's not quite November, but a lot of really good things have been announced and they're kind of relevant right now. So rather than waiting a week or so, I thought let's go ahead and do an update video right now. You guys ready? Let's go to it. First thing, of course, is, well, the elephant in the room, Genie Plus, that totally came out this week. But Genie Plus isn't the only thing that came out. Also, Genie came out along with the individual lightning lanes, all, of course, happening on the exact same day. If you guys don't really know what I'm talking about, make sure you check out my Genie video because I really break it down for you. But for those of you who kind of sort of know what I'm talking about it, let's talk about it, right? So Genie, Genie Plus, and individual lightning lanes all kind of came out at the same time. And of course, lots of changes happened with that. First thing is the app. So many people kind of figured out that they couldn't do anything without updating the app. So if you are still struggling or if you haven't updated your app yet, make sure you do that right away. Your app should have the 50th anniversary logo on it. If you do not have that logo on your app, you need to do an update. Next thing that kind of got people a little confused is they were like all ready to you know score their first pass at 7 a.m but there's a whole bunch of stuff on this app that they really kind of had to press the buttons and kind of work their way through so if you are interested in genie plus lightning lane or even just genie now is a good time to explore the app literally kind of just sit down and just you know go through the buttons really explore the tip board there's a whole tip board area that i love not only does it tell you the ride standby wait times but then it also tells you what time you could you know kind of save some time by by getting either genie plus or the you know individual lightning lane i also love they have a dining section so kind of at a glance you can see what dining reservations you could still make for that day because I know not everyone pre-plans and has those dining reservations in advance. By the way, that is totally what I advise to do is to get your dining reservations in advance. But then there's also like a my day section, which of course they changed to genie day. <laughs> And that is your like day, that day of like itinerary. So of course, if you press all the buttons and you select all the things, Disney's gonna kind of, you know, give you what they think your itinerary should be for the day. And of course, some people found out that that itinerary was a little um, wonky. <laughs> so take it with a grain of salt, of course. But I think that if you are interested in this, even just a smidgen of a bit, exploring the app right now, exploring Genie, that's right, just regular Genie, which is the free system, will help you when you are actually in the park trying to navigate. And of course, one of the biggest things that happened is there was a section on the app where if you, you know, you go into the app, you press the three dash lines in the corner, you could go into something called my plans. Well, my plans was kind of seeing your trip at a glance, right? That was an easy way for you to see what your park pass reservation is, what your dining plans are for that day and kind of see it for a week. So if you're trying to plan your whole trip, you can easily say, okay, Monday I was doing Magic Kingdom, Tuesday I'm doing Epcot and so on. Well, for like two days, that whole my plans just disappeared. <laughs> it was so frustrating because you're over here trying to plan, you know, not everyone's in the park right now doing Genie Plus. Some of us are still trying to get park pass reservations and dining reservations and we kind of needed to see what was going on with our trips. It just disappeared. Thank you, Disney, for listening to us because they brought it back. It's in the same area, except it's called Future Plans. So if you are one of those people who was like, what happened to my plans, Disney? Why are you messing with the system? Make sure you check out the thing that's now called future plans because it's the exact same thing. It'll show you your whole vacation at a glance. Again, you get to it by pressing the three uh, dotted lines 
over there on the right hand side of the app. But yeah, the biggest thing out of this whole system is you really need to explore the app. Knowing the app, knowing what all the buttons do and, and where to look for things is really going to be key. Of course, when you're actually there, some few little tidbits, I'm just going to kind of throw them in a little bit, is um, Slinky Dog has been going uber fast. So if you are at all interested in skipping any form of line for Slinky Dog, you might want to score that one first. Same thing with Rise of the Resistance. Rise of the Resistance passes have been gone by like 10, 10, 30. So if that is something you are interested, ironically, both of those are at the same park, right? Hollywood Studios. So if either of those rides are of interest, make sure you try to select those really soon. Other people are finding out that yes, the perk of being able to do this at 7 a.m., that is to get those individual lightning lanes, is huge so if you can at all try to stay on property that is going to help you out so those people who had to wait till nine o'clock or park opening to get rise of the resistance weren't as lucky as those of you who were staying at a disney resort so those are just kind of a few of the takeaways in general people are really liking the system there is a few little people who wonder if you really need it for all your park days, but I think in general for a family who's trying to maximize their vacation and trying to get it all kind of done in one trip, this is a good way to go ahead and do that. So yeah, make sure you explore the app, get an idea of what Genie is, first of all, and then see how that can play into Genie Plus and Individual Lightning Lane. And for anyone who's seen my previous Genie Plus video, you might be like, um, Nina, you're not using the correct terminology. That's right, guys. Disney changed the wording. Of course they did, because it's Disney. So in my Genie Plus video, I talk about individual attraction selections. That's right, a total mouthful. Disney has kind of changed the wording a little bit on that, and they're actually calling them individual lightning lanes. So you now have the Genie Plus lightning lane and the individual lightning lane, two different types of passes, two different types of prices, all using the same lightning lane, which is just the lane you walk through. So hopefully that kind of helps you guys out. But yes, that is the big update. Genie Plus is here. So if you are interested in any form of skipping the line, make sure you check out that video. But yes, check out the app because Genie, just Genie by itself, has really changed what you can do in your app. So make sure you guys give that a look. But let's move on, shall we? Okay. Another big thing that was announced is the candlelight processional. Now, I have mentioned this before, but it's important for this video because you can actually get those reservations um, pretty darn soon. That's right, October 26. So candlelight processional is indeed coming back and it is coming back with the option of doing a dining package. That is, you have up to four different restaurants that you can book for either lunch or dinner. And then with that package, you know, you pay a certain price. With that package, you would also get a pass, a little ticket to the candlelight processional. Of course, as they always have, there's always people who can kind of arrive and attempt to do like a wait in line, walk up situation. Um, again, it's up to you. I think that if you're really interested in candlelight processional, like, once in a lifetime, really important for your trip, just book the dining reservation. That starts October 26. All right, so those four restaurants which you can choose from are Beer Garden over at Germany, Coral Reef, Garden Grill, and Rosen Crown. My family will be attempting Rosen Crown because that's what we love. It's also one of the cheaper options. If you choose to do Coral Reef or Garden Grill, you're going to spend a little bit more money, but the prices are roughly, you know, $62, $63 for an adult, all the way to $71, $74 an adult, and kids are in the $25, whoa, to $46 range if you're going to Garden Grill 
It's all here on the app, so you make sure you guys check it out. But I think the big takeaway that I noticed were the celebrities, right? So traditionally, Candlelight Processional has a celebrity that kind of comes in and reads us the story of Christmas and gives us all the feels, right? There were a few celebrities that are like missing from the list. So I'm kind of like, Whoopi, where are you? Neil Patrick Harris? Where'd you guys go? Are you gonna come back? Because ironically, there are some missing dates as well for candlelight. There is no one listed for December 14th through the 22nd. That's like a whole week. So I am hoping I can keep checking and perhaps they will fill in a few more celebrities. And of course, Gary Sinise is also not listed, who we saw and enjoyed very much last time, but who is on the list? Well, uh, several celebrities are on the list, but to note, one is Jody Benson, right, Ariel? So of course, uh, who wouldn't wanna see Ariel up on stage right there? And then also Pat Sajak from Wheel of Fortune. But if you're interested in Candlelight Processional, again, it's all on the app and it starts October 26. Speaking of booking things, Another thing you can book um, starting October 28th for the general public is the Galactic Star Cruiser. That's right, I'm talking about the Star Wars Hotel. They already gave priority boarding or booking to like DVC, Golden Oak, APs, Disney Visa card members, and all such things, but general public will open up on October 28th. Um, the Galactic Star Cruiser will start boarding on March 1st, 2022. So here in a couple of months. It is so exciting. And yes, spoil alert, I booked it for my family. That's right. We will be going on the Galactic Star Cruiser very soon. In fact, we are going to be one of the first set of people over there experiencing that um, it's just experiencing that. I am so excited. I have now been spending every waking moment I can like trying to find Disney bounding outfits that we can wear and the whole thing. Uber excited for that. But for those of you who want a little bit more detail, I just want to let you know that as a family of four, the cost is well pricey. In my previous a Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser video, I did kind of post some of the pricing in there. But if you want actual real pricing, for my family was roughly $6,400. It was kind of like the pricing Disney mentioned, but then you gotta add tax. So just note that this is a pricey adventure. Also note that they don't really wanna talk to people and just give you quotes. They are really only interested in talking to people who are ready to book. So make sure you know this is pricey Make sure you know it's gonna cost you a good four to $7,000 for a regular cabin, depending on how many people are gonna be in your room. And note that the, the larger cabins, the larger suites, the one bedroom suites and whatnot are selling out the fastest. Why? Because there's less of them. Also note that when you go to uh, book this, if you're not using a travel agent, yep, yeah, hint, hint, you're gonna wanna uh, give them a couple sets of dates just in case your set of date is already booked. Now, the other thing you wanna look for is, spoiler alert, the captain's table. There is something you can book in addition to just kind of like your room and board is a seat at the captain's table for dinner. So just like a cruise ship where you could dine with a captain, they have this on the Galactic Star Cruiser. Now they only seat 11 people at this table. So at least for my family, when I gave them my several dates, it was really important to me that we got the date that still had availability at the captain's table. Again, spoiler alert, <laughs> we're gonna eat at the captain's table, woo woo. So just kind of know those things in advance. Be prepared to pay, which is 20% a deposit be prepared with several sets of dates. And if the captain's table is something that means something to you, make sure you tell that to the person you're booking with. But yes, this all goes down on October 28th and I am uber excited. I just can't guys, we saved our galactic pennies. We canceled a few things to make, uh, you know, space in the wallet for this. So yeah, pretty, pretty excited. But let's move on. Next thing on my list is, I wanna know what you guys think about this. I am a little bummed out, to be honest, but 
Apparently it's Christmas already at Disney? Christmas is apparently starting now at Hollywood Studios. Why? I, I don't know why. I, I, it, it's not even Halloween yet. They still have Boo Bash going on, but apparently at Hollywood Studios, it is indeed Christmas. They have already started putting up their Christmas decorations. And I don't know, let me know in the comments, guys. Are you one of those people that are just like, you know, can we finish a holiday first before we start the next one? Because I am that person, I just am. I went to Kohl's last week. They already had a full on Christmas display. Drives me bonkers. But what my daughter can't stand is when they start playing that holiday music and it's not, and it's still October. Drives her mad. So I'm curious, are you those people who are like, can we just, can we just get through to November and then you can bring on Christmas? Or do you love Christmas so much that you're like, you know what, 24 seven, 365, bring it on. I'm very curious, but yes, Hollywood Studios is already gotten its Christmas decor. And I assume it's because it's one of those parks that doesn't, like it doesn't have boobash, right? So it doesn't really decorate for Halloween. So they probably thought, you know, why not? Let's get our decorations up a little sooner. But it does feel just a little too soon, but we're gonna move on. Next thing they announced is the International Festival of the Arts. That's right, over at Epcot, that is coming back again for 2022. Not that I was worried, were you? I mean, I knew they were gonna do it, but they did come out with dates and that will be January 14th through February 21st. Now, the Interna International Festival of the Arts is kind of one of their shorter festivals, right? Because food and wine and flower and garden, those can last for several months. International of the Arts only lasts a few select weeks. So if you're interested in this particular festival, make sure you uh, get your booking on now, January 14th through February 21st. It's just slightly longer than a month. But yeah, I haven't been in a really long time. I really, really love that festival just because it's a lot about art, right? I am an artist. That is what I love and do. That's what I've been classically trained to do. That's what I went to school for is to be an artist and to be able to see all those wonderful art paintings and things that the art, the Disney artists do. I mean, I, I could just walk around there for days and just be happy as a cucumber, right? So yeah, International Festival of the Arts is coming back. Next thing on the list is cast member compliments. Now, did you know that previous to what I'm gonna talk about, you could actually give a special compliment to an amazing cast member through Twitter using the hashtag, what is it, cast member compliment? Or you could go to guest services and tell them about an amazing cast member. Or you can do it my way and when you get back from your trip, you can send guest services a little email for which I always list all the amazing cast members and Disney chefs, that's right. And I kind of list them out and talk about how amazing they were on our trips because on this channel, we are very pro Disney cast member. It is the Disney cast members that will make our trips. It's that little extra of magic that only they can provide that always make our vacation. It's that little extra smile, that little extra chat. It's not about the freebies, guys. It's about that it, little bit of extra love, even if it's just through conversation, that those cast members provide. So anyway, now on the My Disney Experience app, you can go in and you can actually give your own cast member compliment. Now, I've been kind of doing it for fun. I've been giving random compliments to who knows who because unfortunately, it's there doesn't have a section for you to, you know, pick out. No, it was Jennifer at the Emporium. That was who was the amazing cast member. It's kind of generic, right? It asks you for what the compliment is for, you know, like uh gave me a little extra special magic, really took into my concerns, kept me safe, you know, whatever the compliment is kind of for and you click it. And then it will say, where was the location? Um, I don't know, Magic Kingdom. And then well, they'll say dining, shopping, whatever. And you go through all the prompts, but there wasn't really an area, at least that I can find, let me know if I was wrong, where I could specifically say, you know, it was Jay at Animal Kingdom. It was Jennifer at the Emporium to give that cast member their little extra, you know, specific compliment because it is these compliments, these guest service, you know, recognitions 
that really help the cast members out. It, it helps them move up if that's what they choose to do. It just helps them get recognized, right? They're in the heat all day long with all these guests, not all of them being as magical as you might think you are. And yeah, they totally deserve our recognition. So if the minimal thing you can do is to do the cast member compliment on the app, please do so. Disney, if you're listening, I would love to be able to put in the cast member's name or at least be able to identify who they were so that you can give that specific cast member their little star or whatever it is that you do. But yes, cast member compliment on the app. Now, the next set of newly announced things are for live entertainment. Disney is so done with COVID, guys. They are as done with COVID as you and me are. They are sick of it. They are trying to bring back all of these things, and that includes live entertainment. It has been so long that some of these things have happened that I am so excited to announce that these things are coming back. Some of them I've already been back, like Yeehaw Bob, you guys know him, back at the River Roost Lounge over at Port Orleans Riverside. He is a piano playing, singing, crazy man of awesomeness over there. So make sure you check him out. And he came back October 14th. So if you're staying at that resort or if you just wanna check out that resort for the evening, he usually has a pretty big audience and it is, it is a good time. So welcome back, Yeehaw Bob. We have totally missed you. In fact, when COVID happened, he kind of had to start his own little like, I think he did it on Zoom. He did a few things on Zoom to kind of help himself out. But definitely when he left, everyone was really, really sad. And on top of that, um, Casey's over at a Magic Kingdom, they brought back their piano player, which is amazing as well. And on October 1st, for the special 50th, they brought back some of the original piano players over at Casey's. So that was pretty exciting. Next thing that's coming back um, is the musicians or the drummers over at Animal Kingdom, specifically the Tam Tam drummers over in Africa are coming back in November. A few of the other kind of musicians and singers are also returning to Animal Kingdom. And it's funny because I didn't realize how much I missed them until they were gone. Like I always remembered walking towards Kilimanjaro Safari and, you know, Safari and always seeing the drummers. And I would always stop and, and take a look and, and film them and whatnot and enjoyed it. But it wasn't until they were gone that I was like, there is just something missing. It was like this little bit of magic or sparkle that was kind of missing from that area of the park. So I am so excited that they are coming back again, beginning of November. Now, you princess people, that's right. Princesses are returning to Fairy Tale Hall over at Magic Kingdom. Of course, I must say that all the touching and the kissing and the signature thing, that has not returned yet. But you can still take an awesome socially distanced picture with those princesses. So yeah, Fairy Tale Hall, so excited to have those princesses back. And with that said, Minnie Mouse is returning to Red Carpet Dreams over at Hollywood Studios. It's kind of near sci-fi. Um, over there where you can kind of meet Minnie and it's an adorable, again, it's a socially distant thing, but at least you can meet Minnie. Same thing with Mickey over at the Town Square Theater at Magic Kingdom. Of course, he will be in his 50th anniversary iridescence glowy outfit. So that's gonna be pretty exciting. Again, all that happens in early November. So Mickey, Minnie, princesses, music, entertainment. Yes, it is coming back. Disney is slowly returning and I, I am uber excited for it. And of course, along with entertainment and forgive me if I'm a little nerdy about this one, but Indiana Jones <laughs> stunt spectacular, the epic stunt spectacular is returning December 19th. I love that show. I love Indiana Jones. That's what I grew up watching. So yeah, I love watching that show. My kids love watching that show. I am so excited that it's returning. I am so curious if it's returning to its full, you know, splendor that it was, or if it's going to be 
modified. I'm also curious if they've changed it because it's been the same stage show for a really long time. And as much as I love the old stage show, I kind of would love some new like tics, tips and tricks, right? Some new kind of adventurous jumping and fire and explosion, something that I can't really predict because I haven't seen the show, you know, a hundred times before. But either way, Indiana Jones is coming back. Make sure you check that out over at Hollywood Studios starting December 19th. And of course, the last thing on my list is the announcement of the new Magic Band Plus that are coming out in 2022. Did you guys hear about this? So all these discussions we've been having with all my Magic Band videos has been, are Magic Bands going away? Are Magic Bands getting phased out? Is Disney trying to push us to use our phone, you know, Magic Mobile? Well, apparently Disney has decided to make new interactive magic bands that will be coming out, like I said, early December or early 2022. So these magic bands are going to be fully interactive with what's going on, you know, specifically the fireworks shows. They're going to light up and kind of complement, you know, the different fireworks shows over at Magic Kingdom and Epcot being Disney Enchantment and Harmonious. You're going to be able to participate in some virtual way over at Galaxy's Edge with uh, some Star Wars stuff, which is pretty exciting. And this is how they're gonna have guests interact with those 50 statues. So when those 50, you know, glowy statues first were announced, they said they were interactive. And I'm thinking, well, how are they gonna be interactive? Well, that's because you need to get the new interactive magic band. So I'm assuming you can, you know, kind of go up to it and it's either gonna light up the statue, which seems kind of odd, it most likely will interact and do something on your magic band, probably some lights or maybe some talking or music or something. But yeah, so tip, if you are not going until 2022, do not buy magic bands right now. Wait, wait until you can get the interactive magic band because I know Every kiddo is gonna wanna play with that. And kiddo at heart, that's right, don't forget about the adults. So again, these are gonna be uh, color changing magic bands. They're gonna vibrate, they're gonna sparkle, they're gonna recognize gestures. I'm not even sure, but either way, it sounds uber exciting, again, early 2022. So I will be using our same boring magic bands for our next trip, but then for 2022, I am going to look out for one of these interactive magic bands. But kind of side note, I'm extremely curious about this because if you have reservations on the Galactic Star Cruiser, you will be getting a special data band with that uh, stay. I'm wondering if that data band is just a special version of the new magic band. Therefore, I can use my special data band just as I would these interactive magic bands. So very curious on that but yeah as always guys i really hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it helpful or at least interesting if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel if the subscribe button is red please click it turn it gray hit the bell icon for notifications like this video and comment let me know what you think about all these things that we talked about are you excited for mickey to come back the princesses the star cruiser yeah guys let me know but as always Mahalo for watching. Nina out. Bye.